This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Right, let's go through, finish it off. Hope you're happy now with everything to do with the individual accounts aspect to do with deferred tax. Because if you are happy, then you can begin to apply that knowledge to what we have based upon the group accounts. And the, the key thing to appreciate with group accounts and deferred tax is that group accounts are based upon substance. So when you consolidate the assets and the liabilities, the income and the expense, that's all based upon substance. We've made various adjustments. However, when we look at the tax balances, the tax balances are based upon the legal form, aren't they? You know, the parent is taxed, the subsidiary is taxed. So we just need to be careful that when we're looking at the group accounts, the, the tax balances reflect the substance as well, okay? Because we've made adjustments to the assets, the liabilities, the income, the expense. We might need to make adjustments to the tax expense, the tax assets, the tax liabilities to reflect the substance, okay? So what we've got, we've got three areas to consider. I say three, one of which we don't need to consider whatsoever, which is the middle one, goodwill, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. The first one that we're going to go through and look at is your fair value adjustments okay remember when we consolidated our subsidiary we went through and adjusted the carrying values so the book values up to fair value didn't we now that just then goes through and gives us a little bit of an issue from the fair tax perspective because the fair value is neglected in the individual accounts of the subsidiary, isn't it? So when the deferred tax balance is calculated, they've taken the carrying value in S's books compared to the tax base that the subsidiary has based upon the tax rules. When we've consolidated the assets and liabilities, what we've then done is we've bumped them up, haven't we, to their fair value. Now, if we've bumped them up to fair value, a little bit like a revaluation, there's going to be some additional deferred tax, isn't there? So what you've got to do there is on consolidation of these fair value adjustments, the carrying value is now higher by the, the, the amount of the fair value adjustment. And that fair value adjustment is going to go through there because the fair value is usually increased on the value of our assets. That will give us an additional deferred tax liability, isn't it? We normally increase the value of the assets compared to their book value. If we're increasing the assets, the carrying value is now even higher in the group accounts than the tax base. So we get an extra deferred tax liability. So we're going to have to credit our deferred tax liability. The other side, however, isn't taken directly to profit or loss. The other side of the entry is taken to your goodwill because it's a consolidated adjustment. So it shouldn't directly impact profit or loss. You know, that tax expense is a legal tax expense. We shouldn't really play around with something as such like that, should we? We should just leave it there as being factually correct. What we do, however, is when we adjust for the deferred tax liability, the other side of the entry is taken to your consolidated goodwill. So essentially you credit the deferred tax liability and debit goodwill. So that increases the value of the goodwill. Uh, if you're starting to panic and thinking, whoa, that's going to appear in group accounts, where it tends to appear, and it pretty much appeared in every question, if memory serves me right, is that it tends to appear in your group statement of cash flows because it fits in quite well. Because when you have your group statement of cash flows, you could have the, the addition or the acquisition of a subsidiary during the year. Uh, and if you acquire a subsidiary, you consolidate it at fair value. So those fair values will be higher than the book value. And when you do that, you have an increase in the deferred tax liability that can then be incorporated in your tax T account to work out the tax expense. The other side is taken to goodwill. So you can take that to your goodwill T account as a debit entry because you might be having then to work out the impairment for the year in goodwill, which is a non cash expense that gets adjusted within our operating activities. Whew. Yeah, so it fits in perfectly. You tend not to see it so much within a group SFP, within a group statement of profit or loss question, but you can virtually guarantee 
that your deferred tax and fair value adjustment in the group account arises in the group statement of cash flows question. So, so have a look at those questions and we'll see some when we come to the revision. Uh, in terms of goodwill, uh, goodwill is an additional asset, isn't it, that we bring into the consolidation. The tax authorities look at us accountants and think, what on earth are you doing? You've got to be crazy. Goodwill, what is it? It's a made up number, isn't it? OK, so it's a made up number. and The tax authorities don't like things being made up, do they? They like factual things. Uh, so therefore, that goodwill will be a permanent difference. Um, we remember that with permanent differences, there is never, ever any deferred tax. OK, so for goodwill, ignore it. Okay, there's no adjustment to make. The only adjustment we have so far is on your fair value adjustments. Uh, the final one that you've got is PUP adjustments. And I struggle to remember any time at all when we saw PUP adjustments and deferred tax appearing within an exam question. So you never know when it could arise. Uh, but what you've got there, think about a PUP adjustment. Uh, the parent sells the subsidiary. The parent makes a profit parents company accounts are taxed aren't they okay so the profit that the parent makes gives rise to tax in the individual accounts but from a group accounts perspective we remove the pup don't we now if we remove the pup we're removing profit but there's also the tax there isn't there in the parents book so as well as removing the profit we also need to remove the tax so to remove the tax expense, we're going to have to go through there and credit the expense and debit our deferred tax asset. So as well as removing the PUP, we need to remove the tax on that PUP adjustment as well. So to remove the expense, we credit the expense and debit our deferred tax asset. And then what happens ultimately is when that subsidiary finally sells the goods off outside into the real world outside of the group we then go through there and we then release that deferred tax asset so reverse it out so you credit the asset and debit the expense because we can now recognize the tax expense on the ultimate sale of the goods outside of the business that's it i'm not even going to throw in a numerical example i just don't think it's worth it i, I think it may just go through and complicate things yet further because I think the main thing to understand is that if you have a profit that's between the parent and the sub or the sub and the parent on consolidation, you eliminate the profit and eliminate the tax upon it as well. OK, uh, and you'd be prompted to do so within the question. It would talk about a pup and it would talk about any tax in relation to that pup as well. OK. There you have it. I think the key one to understand and make sure you're happy with is the top one, isn't it? The fair value adjustment. Uh, it arises on your group statement to cash flows question. The fundamentals are that we created the fair tax liability on the fair value adjustment that we make. So we credit the fair tax liability and the debit go to your goodwill. I can't emphasize how important that is there. Other than that, that's it. That's the fair tax done and dusted. We'll see plenty of it as we go through and see your group statements of cash flows questions. There could be some other bits to do with individual accounts that you see within the narrative parts of question two or question three. But other than that, that's it from the world of deferred tax.